The moment that we have all been waiting for, version 14 is finally here for Tesla's full self-driving. It is still supervised. However, there is now a hands-free mode mentioned when you turn it on. From my understanding, you can actually enable this anytime, anywhere. You don't need to push the brake pedal and it takes over immediately. There's almost no hesitation. It's a very seamless start into full self-driving. Normally, when you take over from a turn like that and try to engage it like in the middle of a turn, it gives you a little like beep beep and, and says like it's not ready and you gotta wait a second. Let's actually try that again. If I take over, oh my goodness, look at that huge improvement. It's ready to go all the time. That's amazing. That's something we've never had before. FSD's always had this little delay where after you take over, you had to wait, I don't know, maybe five to 10 seconds, something like that. Maybe sometimes more if you're in the middle of a maneuver. But to see like, and I missed the click that time, but boom, as soon as you click it, let's see. Wow, 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 that is exciting. Now, a lot of release notes have been released. However, this is still very limited release. There are a, a number of people, and these are early access folks that have gotten it, and a lot of these people just didn't sleep last night at all. So my hat goes off to all of these people that are constantly hustling, including Tesla's team, who has put a lot of hard work into this. I know this is not easy. Imagine deploying a safety critical software onto public roads and allowing anyone, everyone, well, this select group of people to start, to film and document it. This is groundbreaking technology that is going to save a ton of lives in the future, and it is really incredible what Tesla is doing here. This version is ready for wide release. If anyone watching this video needed to hear my opinion on that, this is ready for wide release. Let's get into the release notes and some of the things that I'm seeing online. Added arrival options for you to select where FSD should park, in a parking lot, on the street, in a driveway, in a parking garage, or at the curbside. And here is a very early example of full self-driving version 14, finding a parking space and parking exactly in between the lines. This is AI driver and listen to his comments here. That's about as good as it gets here. That is right between the lines. And then we have Chuck Cook taking the car to a supercharger. Notice how it's not doing the parking stack. Oh my God, that was like a one shot. One shot. Oh my gosh. Holy smokes. That was awesome. And now here we are ready to go. So much better than auto park. And I didn't have to deal with start and stop. It just did it. There's added handling to pull over or yield for emergency vehicles. And we have seen this down for robo taxi since June, 2025, that this has been a possibility, but now it's a fully documented feature where it's working 100% of the time. Also, Ashok mentioned that this is coming for Cybertruck owners. That was huge news. I saw that and I had to smile. He didn't say when, but it does look like it is coming for Cybertrucks. Added navigation and routing into the vision-based neural network for real-time handling of blocked roads and detours. This is really big. So for the longest time, it would encounter a blocked road and it would just sit there and hesitate and basically do nothing. Added additional speed profile to further customize driving style preference. And I'll go over that here in a moment. Improved handling for static and dynamic gates. Now that's really cool. When you have a gate going into a parking garage, for example, or a ticket gate, that's a huge new improvement. And here we can see Zach or Black Model 3 taking his car through a parking garage very, very smoothly. And then as he exits, you can see the car slow down automatically for the gate. He puts his ticket in, the gate lifts up, the steering wheel moves gently to the right, and then it exits the garage. This was really, really well done. Improved offsetting for road debris. This is obstacle detection for tires, tree branches, boxes. Improved handling of several scenarios, including unprotected turns, lane changes, vehicle cut-ins, and school buses. School buses is a big one. We've all known that that has been an issue in the past. It's not 100% reliable. Also, unprotected turns. This has been a big challenge, and Chuck Cook is constantly documenting that. We got a couple little gaps from the left, and no gaps, uh, sp spattered gaps on the right. Oh, this guy is turning left here. He's gonna do a U-turn. That's gonna change the whole dynamic. Now we can't go. It did not even creep because of him. Now we're waiting and traffic is full from the left and from the right. 
This is a good, okay, this is what I would call medium traffic. Okay, we got two cars, and then we're wide open from the left, but we're not from the right. Is it gonna go to the median? It is. Look at that, we're going to the median. Nice question mark. Now we can't make it back. Um, okay, oh, now we got, we got a car behind us. We got one, two, the left lane is open. Is it gonna go? It's going into the left lane. Nice job. Tesla AI, that was a really good one. Now the people that have full self-driving version 14 that I've seen so far are Black Model 3, which is Zach. He's out in California, I believe in Southern California. We also know that AI Driver has it. We know that a Dirty Tesla has it. And I'm sure I'm missing a couple other people, but it's no more than 10 people that have received it, at least that are posting about it here on X today. All right, this just in as I'm editing this video, many more Tesla self-driving V14 improvements still to come, but wide rollout of 14.1 has begun. 14.2 rolls out in a few weeks, and then 14.3 a few weeks later, depending on safety testing. There is so much change that we are carefully confirming each one. And as for hardware three owners, we just need to continue to wait. There is no new news available. We will eventually be getting a hardware upgrade. Improved ability to manage system faults and recover smoothly from degraded operation for enhanced reliability. You know, that's a thing. So we'll click start. Oh. Whoa, what the heck? <laughs> whoa, whoa. Okay, something never before seen. A takeover immediately warning, followed by FSD saying, nah, forget that, I'm driving. This is great when your camera is occluded, when you have that red steering wheel icon that shows up, maybe the sun is shining in through the windshield. And to that point, there's a new feature here, added alerting for residue buildup on interior windshield that may impact front camera visibility. If affected, visit the service for cleaning. So that's great that we now didn't get a notification before people were kind of in the dark. You know, is it is it my car? Is it what's going on? And all always, without a doubt, the blame was put squarely on full self-driving when in fact it was really the windshield being dirty. Added automatic narrow field washing to provide rapid and efficient front camera self-cleaning. Now this is most likely what the RoboTaxi uh, experiences where the wipers go up and then they kind of like a wipe right in front of that front camera so it's like a specific front camera cleaning mode you can kind of think of it like that I think that's automatically taking place here to optimize aerodynamics wash at higher vehicle speed could be related to high speeds only we're gonna find out hopefully someone documents that here on camera as well Upcoming improvements, overall smoothness and sentience, and that's probably coming from Elon Musk. And then parking spot selection and parking. Now we get into the arrival options. These look like they get automatically selected depending on where your destination is, but you can select it such as parking lot, street, driveway, parking garage, and curbside. So this is for kind of a robo, robo taxi style drop off the preferences for arrival options and preferred parking positions are persisted for each destination. So it sounds like if you are going to a destination and maybe it selects the wrong one, you can then change it and it will save that so the next time you go to that destination, it will remember that. It says here, our reasoning model will assess the suitable options for your destination and pick an intuitive default. So there you go. Once you have the default, if you don't like it, you can change it and test out different scenarios to see how it parks itself. And I'm guessing that it's gonna go straight toward that destination pin and get as close as it can before finding a parking space. But finally, we have parking available. Previously was only kind of the unpark, if you will, which is also known as the actually smart summon. And then we have the speed profiles. A lot of people are going to be disappointed to find out that you can no longer use the scroll wheel to select your max speed. The scroll wheel now selects the speed mode. So what are these speed profiles? Well, we get the sloth mode, which is really kind of slow, doesn't change lanes very often will not exceed the speed limit. Then we have chill, which is what we had before, standard and hurry. So let me read the description here. It will now determine the appropriate speed based on a mix of driver profile, speed limit, and surrounding traffic. That's what it always did before. Introduced new speed profile sloth, 
which comes with lower speeds and more conservative lane selection than chill. A lot of people have issues with full self-driving right now where you have an upcoming right turn and your car may be two lanes to the left of that. And it's like, hey, wait a minute, we need to get over to the right. I don't know about your wife or your significant other, but my wife, she always panics when FSD is not in the lane it should be for an upcoming turn. It looks like sloth mode will solve that for people like her. Driver profile now has a stronger impact on behavior. The more assertive the profile, the higher the max speed. So it sounds like this is a little bit more distinguishable, whereas before it was harder to tell the difference, especially if you compared standard to hurry, for example. And as I mentioned, operating that right scroll wheel up and down will now adjust the speed profile setting rather than the precise max speed offset selection in miles per hour or kilometers per hour. And then we get UI improvement. You can start self-driving with a tap of the touchscreen from park or anytime during your drive. You can adjust settings like the speed profile and arrival options directly from the autopilot visualization on the center display. Now, something interesting that I saw online is that the automatic cruise control or the advanced cruise control, also known as TACC, and also the auto steer, which is also known as autopilot, those features seem to be kind of all one platform with version 14. It looks like full self-driving, once you enable it, it's only that feature that's available, and these other features are going to be added later. At least that's what I saw in a screenshot from, I believe it was Nick on X. Now, if you had version 13 and you had AI4, then you're used to the brake confirm option to start self-driving. Well, brake confirm for the self-driving button is now defaulted off. When disabled, start self-driving will not require you to press and release the brake to confirm engagement. You can enable brake confirm in the autopilot brake confirm menu. I also understand that when you're going over railroad crossings and or construction, a message will pop up on the screen telling you to pay attention. AI driver did say that that is a bit distracting and actually has the opposite effect of what Tesla is intending for drivers to pay attention. They're actually now staring at their screen, making it a little bit more dangerous. There are other features here that are built into version 14, but all of these I believe were also available in version 13, but I'll cover them very quickly here. When it comes to strikes, which is basically you not paying attention to the road, the driver monitoring system, the DMS, there's a camera that faces your eyes and your head to determine if you're paying attention. Well, if you're not paying attention, you will get a strike. That means you cannot use full self-driving for the remainder of that drive. Now, you can put the car into park and enable it again. I do believe that's still a, an option. However, if you do get too many strikes, then you basically can't use it for, it used to be seven days. But this strike forgiveness period has been reduced from seven now down to 3.5 days. So strikes are given when drivers fail to stay attentive while using FSD or autopilot. However, you don't get all of your strikes back. It's just one is forgiven every 3.5 days when you don't get any additional strikes. So you have to pay attention, you have to be a good driver, and then you'll slowly start getting your strikes back. Also, summon standby. Summon standby energy consumption is lowered in this update by disabling it during periods of low usage. Summon standby will be automatically disabled between the hours of midnight and 6 a.m. In addition, if your vehicle has been parked for more than 24 hours, summon standby will also be disabled. Summon standby allows the vehicle to remain awake and processing data so that summon can be used immediately after opening the Tesla app. The feature can be disabled completely under controls autopilot. Now, one key thing to note, a lot of people have complained about actually Smart Summon not working very well. It stops intermittently, it's not reliable, and in a lot of cases, it's actually embarrassing. This is not really ideal for a wide number of use cases, especially when you're trying to show it off to friends and family. However, one very important thing that you need to do is turn on Summon Standby. If you don't have Summon Standby enabled, you will have these issues. So it's very important that you go in and turn that on. You can exclude your work, you can exclude your home, and you can exclude favorites so that Summon Standby doesn't consume battery 
when you're in those environments. Also a very simple update for Grok. For vehicles with Grok, which was introduced in update 2025.26, Tesla now distinguishes a difference between holding down the microphone button or right scroll wheel on older vehicles and just tapping it. A long press of the button will activate Grok, while a tap will activate the older voice command system. With this update, Tesla is now reminding users that they'll need to hold down the mic button to activate Grok. Another very small update is Pin to Drive supports Start FSD from Park. This is a really great new update that kind of flew under the radar, but basically you can have your Pin to Drive and enable FSD. Basically what happens is you enable FSD by hitting the button on the touchscreen, and then you input your Pin to start, and then FSD begins driving. And then the last feature, which again is not new or unique to version 14, is drowsiness detected. For newer Tesla vehicles, the camera detects when the driver is getting drowsy and will recommend for them to turn on full self-driving. Previously, I believe it mentioned to take a break or just mentioned something to the effect of, hey, you should probably uh, pull over or something like that, but now it's recommending to turn on FSD. I think it's great that Tesla's providing extra safety when it detects those situations. And that's especially ideal when you're on a very long road trip. I don't know how many times that I've been driving where it's been very monotonous and very uh, hard to stay awake. <laughs> so this is a great new safety feature. I can't wait to see more videos surface on version 14. Also, my mother has a 2026 Model Y Juniper with full self-driving. She lives she lives in another state, so it's a little bit difficult for me to get over there. It takes a while to drive, but as soon as she gets it, I will make every effort possible to get over there and test with her car. Now, I just have to note that as soon as AI5 launches, when that new platform arrives, I will be getting a new Tesla. I can't wait for that day. It's going to be a stretch, but I'm probably going to be using gains from Tesla stock and other stocks to be able to afford a new car again. I never thought I'd buy another new car, but you only live once. And this is an opportunity of a lifetime to be on the bleeding edge, not just the cutting edge of this life-saving technology. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, consider hitting the like button and the subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.